Can you make an STI reliable? No. Can you make it pretty reliable? Yes. Are some better than others at being reliable? Yes. In today's video, we go over my dad's 2007 STI he just got. I do everything we can to make it as reliable as possible so my parents can drive it with no stress. This is gonna be a great video if you're interested in learning how to make these things as reliable as possible because a lot of people are gonna be looking for these as time goes on because I really do believe they're gonna be a future classic. In the previous video, we saw that my dad got the car, we brought it over to the house, I did a couple things to it. But it's that you could have said. <laughs> It has all the right supporting mods, has everything going for it. IAG air oil separator, a Tomei Catalyst downpipe, and pretty much stock other than that. The car can breathe better and any blow-by gets recirculated so it doesn't really burn oil technically anymore. It gets the air and the oil gets separated and the oil gets sent back into the engine so it can stay full of oil instead of burning oil. It's a very healthy engine, the car's been babied. So at this point, we're gonna knock down a list of what we're gonna do to take this thing to the next level. And then at the end of the video, I'll break down kind of my overall thoughts on this is like best case scenario type of car, lower miles for the year, great condition, owner did all the right supporting mods. We'll talk about the other scenarios at the end of the video because these can get really, really pricey, especially right now. And I think they're going to double within the next five to 10 years. To pick up where we left off from our last video, taking care of this car and really giving it all the attention and TLC that it needs, we're going to be doing oil change, transmission fluid, rear differential fluid, upgrade to delicious tunings, coil packs they just came out with, a step colder spark plug, and a tune from delicious tuning, the stage two off the shelf map that may take a couple revisions. Little bonus, we clean the engine bay, get that all dialed, and we also use a Cerakote trim coat to make all the blacks look perfect because in the last video we did ceramic coat it, polish it the whole night. Before we dive into the process, I see way too many camo hats and way too many black and white hats on karmaspeed.com. Go grab a new era hat. These are the highest quality hats I can possibly get. They're my favorite ones to wear. I would buy the baseball caps and rock like some Diamondbacks hat or San Diego hat just because I wanted the fit. So I got the same thing for Karma Speed, the puffed embroidery logo. So go check those out. We also have Karma Speed Jet Tags. We have our STI, we have our WRX. On the other side, we have our Karma Speed logo, so it's super clean. So go check out karmaspeed.com, go grab something really quick. And we have the resources tab as well. So I'm working on a whole new website, but I got this up temporarily. So in case you guys need tools, things like that, go check out the Karma Speed website. I have a lot of stuff in the works. And um, I haven't been uploading a lot lately because I have something at my sleeve. Just bear with me, the paint video is next for the Impreza. It's going to be wild. Let's dive into the process of taking care of this Mint 07 STI. In the description, I have linked a bigger STI oil filter. Always use these. I also have the Motul oil that you should run in any Subaru. This is the 300V edition. It's a little more expensive. I'll have both options, the standard and the 300V in the description. Reusable. Standard maintenance for this car, so it's good for the next couple years. We just put a new air filter in it. I'll have that linked in the description to Amazon as well. Now heading to the back, let's handle the rear differential fluid first. Keep it simple, we're going to disconnect our sensor. Turns out this fluid didn't really need to be changed. It's super easy, you just use the ratchet. You don't even need a socket, it's just oh, it's clean. a little square head on the ratchet fits in there. Fluid looks really clean, no issues there. The previous owner, I guess, changed it. But we'll put some Motul fluid in it. Gear oil from Motul 7590 300 LS. You're gonna need a little pump. I have a link in the description to this. It's good to have in your garage. If you're in a pinch, O'Reilly has it always. Um, I don't know about AutoZone. I'm just gonna take this whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's gonna drip out the front once it's full. You're in your shorts? This is a sensor. 
probably good. I stepped away and Randall made this engine bay look absolutely brand new with some watered down tire dressing. Goes a long way, let it sit on there and then wipe it all off. This thing looks great. Moving on to changing the transmission fluid, we gotta take some things out of the way. Starting with the front mount intercooler and the bypass valve. You've got the two bolts on the bypass valve, and then you have the two bolts on each side of the intercooler that hold it there in place. And then down below in the middle to the right, right where Randall's sticking that in, right there, you're gonna disconnect on your intercooler pipes, then it should pop right off. Now we have access to our dipstick for the transmission. This is only a thing for the older STIs. The, I don't know what year they introduced it, but I know my 2015 STI does not have a dipstick. It's based off of how it falls out the front, just like the rear differential. We noticed the brake fluid is low, top that off, but back to the transmission. Um, the STI in 2015 does not have the dipstick. This one does, so we have to move some stuff. It is a little bit more work, but it is what it is, and it's not too much of a pain. Um, you do not need a lift to do this. Um, we just have one, so we like to make, our, make it easy on ourselves. We did put a new battery in this car as well, and that's what I dropped in there. And uh, Randall put some anti-corrosion spray. Looks nasty. I'm not really a fan of it, but we wiped the excess off, so it's not too bad. Put our cover on it. That way we don't have any sort of that nasty corrosion that makes its way on top of your terminals over time. That is the big drain bolt for the transmission fluid. It's a huge Torx bit. I ended up going to O'Reilly's to purchase it. Nice moves. That yeah, stuff wasn't old. Mm -mm. I totally space filming. There is a drain bolt on the pan on the transmission. You're gonna want to take that out, let that drain, and then tighten it back up as well. Same Motul Gear 300 7590 can go in the transmission. We're going to do 4.3 quarts in the transmission. We're going to need a special funnel to get deep in there and pour our bottles in. Make sure you do not overfill, go based off of your dipstick. I recommend checking the dipstick two or three times and not taking a chance of overfilling it. Next quick task, we're gonna take our Cerakote trim coat wipes and bring this black plastic back to its original deep black color. I'm gonna have a link in the description to Amazon to order these wipes. They are available at some Walmarts as well. These things are rad. I've had my neighbor use it on his FJ Cruiser that has a ton of plastic. It looks brand new months later. Highly recommend this product. Headed over to O'Reilly Auto Parts with my dad. Little father-son time, going to get a step colder spark plug. Here's the number for him, and a 5 8 spark plug socket. Doing the spark plugs on this seems harder than it is. It's kind of about the tools you have, and we're gonna find that out. So right now I'm in the process of removing the battery. I already removed the intake, which there's two bolts you can see here and here. And then you're gonna disconnect it from the pipe right there. Then your whole intake will come out. We have our intake and air duct. And then there's the other part of the intake. Now we have space and we can see to get to the coil packs, which we're gonna be replacing the coil packs as well. But I'm gonna do the right thing and take everything out first and then do the coil packs and the spark plugs. This is a combination of 10 millimeter on the battery, 12 millimeter for the bolts down there and an eight millimeter for some of the air intake piping. I'm not gonna walk you through step by step. You guys can figure it out. There's plenty of videos out there, but if you have ratchets and tools necessary, it'll be no problem. You can just figure it out by looking at it. With the battery out of here, you can see the two coil packs. Under there are spark plugs. This side is gonna be always tougher than the passenger side, which clearly has more room. Shorty 12, super long ratchet. Makes it easy to get to the spot and we can take it off. And I can get the rest by hand. 
I'm spoiling myself doing this one first. Twister. All the way out. So this is my contraption, 5 8 magnetic, not rubber. A socket. A little wobbly. Little baby. This thing's had some days. So the gap? Uh, the radiums come pre-gapped. I got this hand tight. It's time to get the ratchet. Today to make our Subaru reliable, delicious tuning. He's taking care of us today. They've made my life so easy with this Subaru stuff. We got the car, the white car tuned. So it ran really healthy on 91 octane here in AZ. Could be anywhere. I just wanted conservative tunes for these cars. I'm tired of being a kid and pushing the limits and stressing all the time. So they just came out with these new coil packs. These are really sick looking, let alone they are confident that the car will run smooth. They tune well with them and ignition is everything to a tuner from, you know, at least one portion of the process. I'll have a link in the description to get Delicious Tuning's new coil pack. Pick one of these up, do this process with me, and make sure Subi is going to be running right. Go ahead and plug your wire back in, do one at a time, like we said, snaps right in. And this one has the ground. I'm going to have to wiggle this in there, it's a little awkward. There we go. Our plugs in, we've got our new coil pack. Slide this in there. Then we've got our ground on this one specifically don't want to forget that you can see that down there i've never seen this the they emit a uh, scent or something that mosquitoes the skaters don't lack <laughs> what kind of lighter is that it's a torch what tell me mm -hmm. one down got my feet wet you got that bracket for that wire that just holds a wire there keeps it in place pretty sweet they got that yellow now on to the next one that's even easier dad's going in on the second one I'm so romantic with the mosquito candles next spark plug is hand tight snug it up then we're gonna move to the death zone Just got out the hardest one back there. The trick is to disconnect the wire while it's down there very carefully, and then 360 this out. I can't remember, but we use a little wobbly. This is actually a half to three eighths, or this is a three eighths to the one that's in this socket right here. Three eighths. My thumb is. That's a three eighths to half inch adapter, which was actually the perfect length to get to their worst one in the corner back there. So just got it out, worst one's over with. You can pull it out. Thanks. Going back in. Worst one is in. Just take some patience. It'll all, it'll be all good. You feel good about yourself. Now I'm gonna move on to this one. It's gonna be a little easier. In the process, I did disconnect coil pack wire for this guy to make it easier for the new one back there. I remember the first time I did this, I literally had a panic attack. Let's see, I have this set up right here again. This is the wobbly 3 8 to half inch adapter, little short guy, and then my magnetic Duralap AutoZone O'Reilly's brand spark plug socket. And I'm doing a ton of this where I get it in there and I'm getting it out by hand the rest of the way after I broke it loose. And these threads are super long on these spark plugs. Just don't have a panic attack, please. I did, and it wasn't worth it. Just it's all about the right tools, knowing when to take the ratchet off, and just do things by hand. And bang go. We have our last spark plug. This is really old as heck. This is exciting. This is the last one. I get the wire. I can't do this with two hands. You guys get the point. Alright. Just got her buttoned up. Battery on, check. All four wires on these coil packs on, I think. Check them. Math sensor plugged in. Intake on. Air duct. See if it starts. Going for a 
quick drive to make sure it runs smooth. It should be good. Dad's messing with the bed. Oh, come on, bro. Back in the car on our access port. We're gonna change our ECU map. It's gonna pull up, I got the key on. ECU reflash. I have the green connectors plugged in underneath. It'll tell you to do that if you don't. Delicer stage two. We wait a little bit of time. Disconnect the green. On the left is our access port manager with our data log that I recorded while driving. I went ahead and typed up a little message went and dragged data log two to the email, simple drag and drop, then hit send, and then wait for them to reply with a revision if needed. Second data log day for the delicious stage two. We're just gonna verify that everything is good at wide open throttle, and then from there, we should be fine. This car will be reliable. It has the proper tune to run properly on 91 octane. Things you wanna watch, you got your boost, your dynamic advanced multiplier, feedback knock, air fuel sensor, uh, it's your AFR, your air to fuel ratio, coolant temp, and fine knock learn. So the goal here is to make sure that this tune, the dynamic advanced multiplier for the timing stays at one. If it stays at one, that means that it's not knocking, it's not having any detonation, it's not a problem. Now I'm just waiting for the engine to warm up right now, and then we'll do a full throttle pull around 20 PSI, you know, about 90% throttle, and um, we'll make sure all these numbers check out. So we're having a conversation about fuel and where I got it. I got it from, I got 91 octane from Quick Trip. Um, it's usually the busy, busiest gas station and um, delicious uh, recommended Sunoco 76 or Shell. It's not really common where I'm at because usually that's better where they're at. Um, and then we just decided because I don't have these gas stations, we're gonna pull a little bit of timing to be safe. So I said, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull a little bit of timing. And then he sent me another map. 2.8, drag it over here, and now we have our version 2.28. When you install a new, you can see how much this is shaking. When you install or reflash the ECU, the car might be a little shaky at first because the ECU has to learn what's going on and then it cleans it up really a bit. It's got a brain of its own, is what it's supposed to do. Don't stress. See, now it's not moving anymore. Should be good to go. I'm gonna drive it around a little bit at a really casual, normal speed to let the ECU learn, and then I'll get on it. On the last revision of the map, we had a little bit of feedback knock and a little bit of fine knock learn. Nothing that would really damage the engine, but we pulled down the timing a little bit due to the fuel quality and hopefully we see that fine knock learn stay at zero or real close to it and then we get rid of all feedback knock. All right, here's our pull. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see. car runs really good now I'm happy it looks good it's preserved it's got everything going for it so it can be driven for a long time it's gonna be spent it's gonna spend a lot of time in the garage coming up here soon with my parents they only need it for certain situations so it's gonna be pretty much garage kept so it's gonna be good for probably year or two and not even need an oil change but let's talk about if you buy a car with way high miles maybe beat up maybe it's a regular WRX but the same body style before we do that comment down below if you have any tips for anyone that that wants to make their STIs reliable or WRXs. 
I'm always open to learning and all of us can help each other down in the comments. But what helps this process a lot is if you start with a healthy engine. You could have an engine that's about to have ringland failure or it's starting to happen. It's just consuming a ton of oil. Um, it could be just disastrous really quick. So, you know, if you get this car or you went out and bought it or you're looking to buy it, check the dipstick, go drive it for 20, 30 minutes if you can and check the dipstick again. If it's in really bad shape, it will literally drop the oil level within 20, 30 minutes of driving. If it's like borderline about to blow and have ringland failure. So be aware of that, look for that. But the biggest thing is just having, you know, a semi healthy to healthy engine, getting an air oil separator, you know, a high flow cat down pipe, a custom tune to please the, you know, lower fuel quality in areas like Arizona, Texas, and Nevada and stuff like that in places that don't have 93. Um, because that's really the big thing with these cars is the fuel quality gets lower. The ECUs aren't very smart in Subarus. They don't know how to, you know, react to it. Basically what happens is you just get detonation and knock and you start, you know, that's how you break a ringland because if you have 93 octane, usually the ECUs don't have to compensate too much and a lower timing boost to whole nine. So it's really just a lack on the ECU side of things. That's why the newer cars could, you know, you could put 87 in your car in a new Toyota Supra. It's going to pull a bunch of timing and a bunch of boost so it doesn't knock and hurt itself. But the Subarus aren't exactly the best at that. So it really comes down to just a fuel quality thing on the big picture and then you know it could be temperature it could be a bunch of different things but just getting a very conservative tune from delicious tuning this e-tune is super simple it's, it's affordable and um, that way when you're driving it around until you get the parts to make big power or meet your goals then um, you can get it dyno tuned or pro tuned so just right when you get your subaru hit up delicious tuning have them e-tune it and uh, let them know i sent you and um, you'll be cruising with your dam at one and not have any issues so uh, if anyone disagrees with that or maybe I said something wrong, but I'm very confident in what I know about these things at this point in regards to the simple things and the basics of getting into them like right now. Don't forget about KarmaSpeed.com. We have our jet tags, our hats, shirts. I got some more things in the works, so follow KarmaSpeed on Instagram or TikTok. I made a TikTok for the KarmaSpeed brand, so um, that way you guys can stay up to date when things come back in stock when we have new products and such. So thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been a video that's taken over a month to make and we painted a car start to finish and I've learned a lot and I can't wait to share with you guys.